the the poll book the poll book is completely off, completely off. Off that by thirty thousand. I'd say that poll book is off by over a hundred thousand. That how- poll book. Why don't you look at the registered voters on there? How many registered voters are on there? Did you do you even know the answer to that? No, I guess it's, I'm trying to get to the bottom zero. of this here. Zero. Zero. There's zero. So, my question then is if the Guess how many wait. What about what about how what what, what about the turnout rate? 120%? Well, let's uh, let's let representative Johnson ask his plastic question. So, <laughs> so the poll book number, I okay, there there's two things that could happen here. Either the poll book number if ballots were caught multiple multiple times, there, there's two options. Option number one is that the poll book numbers are not going to match. They the, don't. The actual. Not by thousands and thousands of votes. That's not what we see right now. You that, take that's a look again. One. Take a look again. Option number two is that they essentially were, were filling in names of people who didn't vote. That, Dead that's, people, too? So is that, Let's I guess, let is that Representative your Johnson ask his question, and then when I he's done. I thought that was his answer. Okay. Well, I guess uh, that, that's well, my, my question here is why we're not seeing the poll book off by 30,000 votes. That, that's not the what case. What did you guys do? Take it and uh, do something crazy to it? I'm just saying the numbers are not off by 30,000 votes. So I know what I saw. That they're filling in. I know what I saw. And I signed something saying that if I'm wrong, I can go to prison. Okay. Did you? Okay. We're, we're, I think, I'm just trying I th- to ask you a, a me, uh, legitimate question here. Yeah. Let's let Representative Johnson ask his question and then don't interrupt him. And then, okay. and then if you want to respond to it, that's fine. And, uh, did you have more representative? Yeah, I guess I just want to keep following back up with the poll books. So are we saying that the poll book is either wildly off or that they are, that they are filling in names? It's wildly off and dead people voted and uh, illegals voted. Okay. So that's my uh, answer. I think- Going back to the ruling from Judge Kenny, Timothy Kenny, he writes that your description of the events at the TCF Center does not square with any other affidav- right. affidavits. Yeah. He says that there are, I, excuse me, I'm, please, I'm speaking. Please, Thank uh, you. let's let the representative finish and then you can he, he writes that there are no other reports of lost data or tabulating machines that jammed repeatedly every hour during the count. He also writes that neither Republican nor Democratic challengers nor city officials substantiate your version of these events. The allegations simply are not credible, is what Judge Kenny writes. So my question for you is, uh, you know, you're making claims here today that there's systematic fraud in, in what's going on in our elections. Are the courts also tied up in that fraud? Let me tell you what I did by accident, okay? I gave Channel 7 an interview that they tied in to that and made me the witness that's uncredible. Guess what? There's going to be a couple behind me that are going to say the same thing I just said. And the witness before you was also proven not credible as well by oh, the no, same judge. Oh, no, she wasn't because she, was. she wasn't even there. Representative the Camilleri, let's let her finish, please. Talked. The very Cam- first time. Uh, so I just want to understand. Um, you know, I don't know what exactly all the things that are being talked about there are, but but can you tell us uh, what you said today is is the truth? Is that correct? Sir, I wrote a written affidavit. Yes, it is a hundred percent true. Okay, and and did did other people observe this? Absolutely. You'll be you'll, and behind me. You're going to hear a couple. Okay. And uh, and we'll, we'll hear and from them, let me hopefully. just state this: mm-hmm. I was an IT worker on the stage. These, I was working with Dominion. I had n- not no poll workers were not allowed on the stage. The data loss, nobody would have heard about that besides me, Samuel, and Nick. Okay, mm-hmm. just like nobody knows that Samuel went to the. Where Chicago warehouse besides me because I worked for Dominion. Why is it that we're not having more people come forward? I mean, it seems like if there I'll was tell all you this why. widespread fraud that, you know, we'd have dozens and dozens of people. I'll tell you why. Mm-hmm. My life has been destroyed. My life has been completely destroyed because of this. I've lost family. I've lost friends. I've been threatened. I've been th- my kids have been threatened. My, I've, I've had to move. I've had to change my phone number. I've had to get rid of social media. I've, there, the, you, nobody wants to come forward. 
they're getting threatened. Their their people their lives are getting ruined. I can't even get an actual job anymore. I can't <laughs> because Democrats like to ruin your lives. That's why. Yeah, this right here is why Democrats aren't actually worried about Trump's election theft efforts. This is Melissa Carone, and not only is she a witness at Trump and Giuliani's kangaroo election fraud hearing, she's the star witness. This is the best it gets, this woman. This is like a crazy Trump supporter doing an impression of Kate McKinnon doing an impression of a crazy Trump supporter. Now, this was during the latest of Trump and Giuliani's so-called hearings, this time in Michigan. And bear in mind, the only reason these hearings are necessary is because Trump and his allies can't manage to win in court, and so the only option they have left is to hold these sham hearings where the quote-unquote witnesses can basically say anything they want without worrying about telling the truth. And Melissa Carone is a prime example of that. Consider, for example, her claim that there was 120% turnout in Detroit, as if an actual 100 120% turnout rate wouldn't have been brought up in a single court case, as if an example of fraud so glaringly, blatantly obvious wouldn't have come before a single judge. According to Detroit's own government website, out of the 504,714 registered voters in the city, 250,138 voted. That's not so much 120% as it is 49.5%. But hey, numbers can be hard. Another issue she brings up is this claim that batches of ballots were being run eight or 10 times or even more. Only, if batches of 50 votes were being run 10 times and coming in at 500 ballots a pop, the counting boards would have been way off and they weren't off, which means that either they figured out a way to reinvent math in Michigan or she doesn't know what she's talking about. Take all the time you need with this one. And by the way, even the Republican lawmaker here pushes back on this claim to which Carone says this. Why? We're not seeing the poll book off by 30,000 votes. That, that's not the what case. What did you guys do? Take it and uh, do something crazy to it? That the Republican lawmakers took it and, quote, did something crazy to it. Now she's claiming that Republicans are involved, which I guess shouldn't come as a surprise, considering this entire conspiracy theory being propped up by the likes of Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell involves the CIA, the DOJ, Republican secretaries of state, Republican governors, Cuba, China, Venezuela, and Hugo Chavez, who's been dead for seven years. So yeah, why not just throw a few more Republican lawmakers into the mix of people who were apparently conspiring to take down the Republican president? Totally checks out. And by the way, Carone has already tried this whole song and dance in court. And the judge, Timothy Kenny, the chief justice of the Third Circuit Court in Wayne County, Michigan, said that her description of the events, quote, does not square with any of the other affidavits, and that, quote, her allegations are simply not credible. And so, of course, she became Rudy Giuliani's star witness. Because he's not trying to win in the court of law, he's only trying to win in the court of public opinion. So he found someone just as discredited as he is and made her the face of this circus. Consider too that in this very hearing where she pushes back against allegations that she was discredited, she claims that she had to get rid of social media. And yet somehow, when I typed her name into Facebook, there she was with not only an active account, but a profile picture of her and Rudy Giuliani. Doesn't exactly look like someone who's shying away from the attention. In other words, she discredited herself in the same hearing where she lashed out over allegations of being discredited. Surprised? Yeah, me neither. And finally, she claims that she's telling the truth because she can't get a job anymore, and so allegedly, she'd have nothing to gain by coming forward. Although, judging by her decidedly not deleted social media, she's obviously reveling in the attention. And I'll just say this, simply enough, I don't think Democrats are why she's not employed. Here's the thing, these Republicans who even agreed to hold this hearing probably did so because they thought there might be some political benefit for them. They might have even thought that there was a chance they'd be able to help overturn the results of the election and keep their guy in office. But the only thing to come out of this hearing were witnesses like Melissa Carone, who made the GOP somehow look like even more of a joke than it did before. They knew there was no fraud, but they humored this sideshow anyway, and now videos like this one are the only thing making the rounds. So great work. Really. If you like this video, please check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I take a deep dive into the week's most important stories and interview major players in politics, including Kamala Harris, Katie Porter, Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, Eric Swalwell, Mary Trump, Al Franken, Cory Booker, and many, many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.